This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, so we've covered the basics or, or the essentials of IS 37, looking at provisions and contingencies. Maybe you've had a couple of practice goes at some of the questions in the, the study text or, or revision kit that you may have. Uh, but now what we need to do is we need to bring in what the standard refers to as some specific. So it has identified three specific areas that we need to look at, okay, that, that are common themes within business. Uh, first one that we've got there is looking at your future operating losses, okay. So you identify at the end of the year that there's a downturn in the economy, uh, the performance of the business is going to get worse and therefore you will be making losses. Do we therefore go through and provide for those losses now? If you think about prudence, you might think that it is prudent to recognise a loss now, okay, which makes sense. But go back to the word providing, provision. For a provision, we need a present obligation as a result of a past event, a probable outflow of economic benefit, and measure reliably present obligation are we obliged to make those losses there's no legal obligation there's no constructive obligation so therefore because there is no obligation there is no provision okay uh, never ever 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 okay can you provide for future operating losses Second specific scenario is your onerous contract. Okay, uh, what's an onerous contract? In its simple terms, it's it's a contract that you've entered into for a fixed period of time. Part way through that contract, you then realise that the benefits that you get from that contract are outweighed by the costs of fulfilling it. So, the the normal example, which is different to the one we do in a minute. Uh, is looking at, say, a lease, okay? You are renting out some premises. You rent it out for 10 years, but at the end of the third year, you then realise that there is no use in carrying on with the lease and you cannot break it, okay? You have to carry on for, for the, the following seven years. So you have a present obligation being a legal obligation, uh, you therefore can measure it reliably because you know how much you pay monthly uh, and it's probable. Okay, There's a greater than 50% chance of you having to make the payment. It's certain. Okay, The landlord isn't going to let you off through pity. Uh, and what you've got there is that the benefits that you get, so from maybe using it on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, are exceeded by those total costs, in which case you have an onerous contract. Okay, there we go. Uh, if that's the case, uh, you make a provision, and the provision is at the lower of the two following amounts. Uh, the first one is when you continue under the contract. So how much would it be to make the payments netted off against any income that you generate from using the assets, okay, or using the premises? Compare that to the present value of exiting the contract okay so how much would it cost you to pay an exit fee to terminate the lease immediately okay you might think of that and think well chris are we not looking at prudence prudence says to recognize the loss immediately so shouldn't we then therefore recognize that the highest loss uh to be the most financially prudent no that the prudence is coming around from recognizing the provision for the owner's contract the actual amount falls then under uh, common sense, okay? Common sense. Uh, yeah, the, your better judgment. You know, your, your better judgment, to give it an accounting twist, is you would go with the cheapest option, wouldn't we? Okay? If it was cheaper to exit the contract than to continue, then you would exit it. If it was cheaper to continue it as opposed to exit it, then you would continue under the contract, wouldn't we? Makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so therefore you go with the lower. Okay, everybody got that? Yeah, because sometimes you see people put in the higher. Uh, let's go through and have a play around with an example. Mm, tricky one, this. Really hard. Okay. 
Uh, so there's two parts of the requirement. Uh, part A is there a present obligation? The likelihood is going to be yes, otherwise there's no point in doing it, but there we go. Uh, and then B, what will appear in respect of the contract in the financial statements for the year ended? Is it December 2009? Okay. Uh, so is there a present obligation? Is there an onerous contract? Okay. Well, it says here, Deva has a contract to buy 900 metres of cloth for £7 per metre. Okay. And then from that cloth, uh, we can make dresses which sell for $30 after incurring labour costs of $4 per dress. Okay. Uh, so I think from that, you can see that this contract is giving us some economic benefit. Okay. Because if we can sell it for 30, incurring costs of 20, of costs of four, I think the net selling price is therefore 26. And if you, you work the mathematics uh, using each three meters, we should generate more than what we do in terms of buying the cloth itself. OK, uh, there is an alternative. Uh, you can sell the cloth immediately for six dollars twenty five. Uh, so selling it at a loss, if you like. But at the moment. We can sell it for 30 if we make a dress incurring $4 worth of labour costs. So that's the most obvious suggestion at the moment. So we have a contract that is not onerous. OK, uh, the benefits exceed the cost. So everything ticking along hunky dory. OK, uh, it does say that within the contract, uh, there's a cancellation penalty to exit it of $700 for each of the next two months. But the key bit here is that the market price of the dresses fashion changes doesn't it i don't know much about dresses so i say anyway uh has fallen to 22 dollars okay uh so what we've got there we need to then think is this contract now onerous okay uh because it says in ceasing production uh we believe the market will not improve and there are two months notice in the contract. OK, so what we need to do is we need to think back to whether or not uh, there is an onerous contract. OK, uh, and then look at the lower of continuing or exiting the contract. OK. So first of all, is there a present obligation? Well, yes, there is, uh, because we are bound by the contract to pie pie to buy the 900 meters at seven dollars per meter for each of the two months okay so that's what would happen there if we to buy, were to buy it so is there a present obligation yes but the issue there is that that obligation only arises within the account if it is onerous if it wasn't onerous then we wouldn't recognize the obligation. So what have we got? Well, let's just think about the scenarios that we can have. OK, uh, the simplest situation that we can have is that we go through there. And that we exit the contract. Uh, if we go through there and exit the contract, cancel it, uh, then what you've got there is two months at $700 per month. So therefore, that means that there is a loss equal to one thousand four hundred dollars okay uh, so that's one of the options in terms of exiting this contract isn't it okay and the contract that we cannot get out of uh, what have we got then well that's where we just need to be a little bit more careful because what we've got then is that we can go through there and continue with the contract, let's move that over to the left ever so slightly, 
So we can continue with the contract, i.e. buy the material. But then what we can go through and do as well is we have two scenarios. Is one we can buy and make the dresses or buy and sell the cloth. Okay, so as prices are falling, uh, it might not be worthwhile anymore to go through there and, and buy it and make the dresses. But we, we need to have a look, don't we? Okay. Uh, so what have we got? Well, let's go through there and have a look at what happens if we buy. Okay. Uh, so what we've got there, if we buy, uh, is it the 900 meters? At is it bum bum bum? Let me go back. Was it seven pounds, seven dollars per meter uh, for two months? Okay. Uh, tap that into your calculator. Is that there as a cost? of 12,600 uh, clearly that would be the same if you decided to make the dresses it would be no different however if you buy and then decide to sell okay so you're selling the cloth that cloth will retail, is it at $6.25 per meter? Okay. We're going to sell 900 meters each month for two months. So here what we've got there is the 900 meters at $6.25 per meter multiplied by the two months. Tap that on your calculator, and I think you get is it eleven thousand two hundred and fifty. So your overall loss, if that was your choice, would be one thousand three hundred and fifty. Okay, there we go. But we need to check, don't we? We need to see what happens if we make the dresses, because if that is a less loss, so a lower figure, then that is what we would go with, because that is the, if you like, the the the, the common sense alternative, isn't it? The one that loses us the least money. So if we go through there and make the dresses and then sell them, then what you've got here is that each dress takes up not three meters of material okay so 900 meters three meters each is that 300 dresses uh we then go through that is it and dun, dun, dun. oh careful i've missed something out i've forgotten haven't i uh you buy the material but don't forget you also need to add on The labor cost as well okay so here the labor cost i think it works out is it at 2400 because as we were saying 900 meters each dress is three meters so 300 dresses costs us is it four dollars And then multiply by two months. So what you have there is the total cost of making the dresses is there as the fifteen thousand. If we then go through there and sell it, then what's going to happen is you've got three hundred dresses. They retail is it at twenty two dollars each. 
So the 300 dresses comes from there. Uh, 2 times 22 is 44 times 300. Check. I'm sure you'll tell me if I'm wrong. Is that 13,200? So my overall loss there. is 1,800 so if I'm looking now at my provision it's the lower of the scenarios and under my owner's contract the best option there is the 1,315 so I would make that the provision at 1,350 dollars okay there we go uh, again, there'll be a note to the account that, that explains the, the base of the calculation, the, the nature of it, uh, and the likelihood of it happening. Okay, there we go. Uh, just to go through and finish off the section on specifics to do with provisions, the third and final one that we have there is your restructuring. Okay. Uh, the restructuring is whereby you're effectively closing down your business or, or you're moving from one location to another. So a lot of businesses that are doing this at the moment, you know, uh, moving from expensive locations such as London uh, and moving to, to cheaper locations around the UK. OK, uh, if that's the case, you know, you're going to have to spend money on closing down your location. So therefore, are we going to go through there and make a provision? Yeah, because you're going to have closure costs. Uh, that will mean, therefore, there'll be redundancy costs. So there could be quite a big expense that you are expecting. Again, the key bit there is, is there an obligation? And is there a probable obligation? So the key bit that you've got there is in order to create the obligation, the closure needs to have been announced. OK, so if it has been announced, if there is a detailed formal plan. Then a restructuring provision is recognised. OK, uh, if there's a detailed formal plan and it started to be implemented, then that will be sufficient as well. So we need the plan in place that's either been announced or implemented. Because if you've announced it, you're not going to change your mind. Uh, if it's been implemented, you're not going to stop it halfway through, are we? So that, therefore, creates the obligation. OK. Uh, however, just be careful. You can only provide for the costs of closure, uh, not anything to do with the, the continuing activities. So if you've got to implement, say, new computer systems, no, OK, the computer systems are helping you with your continuing activities because there's a risk here that finance directors, uh, the accountants will try and put in as many costs as are possible uh, to get the negative impact of that closure out of the way as soon as possible. So just be on your lookout there within the real world that these provisions aren't overstated OK, to try and clear out the rubbish so the future is then clear. Uh, that's that in terms of the specifics. Uh, yes, the owner's contract was a bit challenging. I, I don't think you get anything as difficult as that within the exam. If you did, then there will be other easier bits within there. OK, so focus on those easier bits before you come back to the more challenging aspects.